My name is Don Cash, and I'm one of the producers for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Show. Here we go. I spend most of my working hours holed up in a dark edit room putting the shows together. But that doesn't mean I never get to go out and enjoy any actual real nature. As a matter of fact, when I leave here and head home, I've got my own little nature preserve waiting for me. This is my frog pond. The pond got started about 10 years ago. We dug a hole in the ground, put in a liner, stacked some rocks, installed a filter, and added a dozen or so goldfish. Now, the goldfish are really nice, but the pond attracts other animals as well. Every spring, it seems like every frog in the neighborhood hangs out here. It's pretty neat. I wanted to know what kind of frogs they are and why I have so many, so I brought in an expert. You know, what's really neat is that you basically had to drive a chunk of dirt and you built a pond. When you build a fish pond, you can expect other wildlife to show up. Birds will come and drink and bathe. Frogs will show up and breed and feed. And then snakes and other predators may show up and feed on those frogs. Pretty cool. Here's a sign of a happy, healthy frog population. This is a whole mass of frog eggs right here. It's really nice. You create a little oasis here. Well, what kind of frogs do I have there? What do you see? These are Rio Grande leopard frogs, and uh, you have all sizes. That frog right there is one of the biggest Rio Grande leopard frogs I've ever seen. This is probably the prime watering hole for frogs in your neighborhood. How do frogs know a pond is here? Part of it is random chance frogs finding it, but also once a frog finds it and there's a male calling, other frogs are going to be attracted to that. One male calling isn't enough to attract females to that site to breed. Once you get several males, they'll change their calls and they work together and form a chorus. And that's much more attractive to females. In the spring, when it's really busy, the pond becomes sort of a frog buffet. Uh, you have a checkered garter snake, and that's a common snake in this area, and they love to eat frogs. If the frogs uh, can't easily escape or it's not necessary, they'll just freeze up and, and hope that the snake notices someone else. A couple of things to note about my pond. These elephant ear plants aren't native. We got them from someone else's fish pond, and they will not go away. And the goldfish? They came from the pet store. But since my pond is a self-contained ecosystem, there's no real danger that the plants or the fish are going to cause a problem elsewhere. It's important to uh, go native, stay local, encourage what you've got in your neighborhood. Uh, certainly don't uh, introduce exotic or non-native species to Texas. And uh, just be patient. If there are frogs in your area, they'll find your pond. And so the frogs find my pond year after year. And I like that. Best frog pond you've ever seen? It's epic. The most amazing nine square meters in southwestern Travis County. I think that's pushing it.